Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. It is a pretty positive day across the markets. The S&P 500 has certainly ripped the faces off of shorts that have taken short positions over the last couple of days. Boy, those positions probably look pretty bloody. S&P up almost 2% at the time of recording this video. AMC also having a very positive day, up about 3.5%, breaking above the key level and that was the november 9th intraday low this is part of my bullish case for the rest of this week the other parts of that being we have a lot of the negative uh or potentially econ potentially negative economic data that already came out we're not going to get really anything else you're going to have initial jobless claims tomorrow you're going to have the final gdp numbers you are going to have initial jobless claims although i don't expect those numbers to move around too much and i don't expect the markets to react too much to it so from now until friday you're really free reign for the markets to figure out what they want to do you have micron earnings here and after hours and that will also be important but none of this i think is more influential than what we are seeing currently with amc alone amc the fact that you are above that five dollar five cent intraday low on november 9th and we really weren't under that for too long yesterday you went under that but you did close above that the day before that this was december 19th you did close under five dollars five cents so you did get one close under that level but we bounced right back up above that so this looks like a triple bottom formation and if you guys watched the last video then you probably know i think the 50 day moving average all the way up to about seven dollars fifty cents possible by the the end of this week now that's all on a technical basis and given the fact that we don't have a lot of economic data that could move around the markets and also these cost to borrow rates which are insane we'll talk about that in just one second but we are getting information out from amc today as well uh, if we go ahead and pull this up uh let's see if it'll load it says amc says it's no longer in talks to acquire theaters from bankrupt sin world the key points amc said it, it is no longer in talks to acquire some theaters from rival sin world sin world filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in september amc's disclosure comes after the company reported another quarterly loss last month now why this is potentially a really good thing is investors want to see companies cutting back and getting leaner this is not the kind of market environment where you want to see a lot of r d spending right research and development or acquisition spending not that kind of market that will be seen as negative right if if companies are trying to xyz companies trying to buy this company well it's probably going to make the buyer stock go down nobody wants to see people spending money right now or i should say companies spending money everyone wants to see people spending money right that's good for the economy but we don't want to see our businesses that we own spending a whole lot of money putting themselves in a bad situation if the economy continues to get worse so this i think is a bullish factor on the day and is helping to contribute to almost the four percent positive day that we are seeing and obviously amc is really in no position since they are not free cash flow positive yet to be going out and trying to buy new theaters even if those theaters uh you know would be profitable or or at, at the very least break even right now let's get into some of the actual data and factors that are playing a role today and if we take a look at bond yields and the dollar first with bond yields pretty flat so this is a positive thing up 0.19 percent meaning bond yields are dropping a little bit today but it's not one of those two percent positive days uh you know where bond yields are shooting down recession fears are crazy it's not that kind of day which is a positive thing anytime that bond yields are dropping from now on Anytime TLT is up, that's a negative thing for the markets. If bond yields are falling when there's 7% inflation and the Fed says we're going to have interest rates at 5.1% by the end of 2023 and bond yields are falling, that means investors are buying bonds because they are fearful about economic growth. They're fearful about a recession. Markets are already base case expecting a recession in 2023. It's not fully baked into the earnings forecast though that is going to be 
the tricky part. Nonetheless, the dollar is up a little bit on the day, but again, it's not one of these days where you're seeing a 1%, 2% move on the dollar, just, just like the bonds. They're pretty well matched up uh, and, and, and just not giving us... Uh, you know, a bullish or bearish tilt really to the bonds or the dollar. And that has really been the two things the markets have been, been reacting to the most in 2022 has been the bonds and the dollar. So days that things are docile, you can tend to get more of this bullish rally in which we are definitely seeing today if we take a look at the ortex data for amc as we reported to you guys in the last video the numbers are looking very good we'll go ahead and go over the updated numbers it's 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 been a couple hours here and we're looking at 19.26 percent short interest of free float up 0.31 percent on the day the live short interest uh or the live amount of shares that are currently sold short sitting at 99.3 million 309 thousand shares of uh that were sold short today zero shares currently avail uh, available most of the day there has been zero shares available cost of our max still sitting at about 98 percent cost of our average at 81.2 percent and cost of our minimum at 19.21 percent these numbers are up a lot from yesterday and they haven't moved around all too much today if you guys go ahead and watch the last video that came out at 1 p.m the numbers are literally the same or, or roughly the same as as what they were in the last video so it's not like these numbers just spiked and came straight back down they're actually spiked and staying spiked if if that makes sense which is a much better thing to see in in the grand scope of things right now as far as the option activity we have seen eight orders totaling 470.4 thousand dollars positive order value of 14 percent again uh not a very positive thing positive order value under 50 percent is technically negative right um uh, but you're not seeing a lot of options you're not seeing a lot of dollars in these options less than a half million dollars on amc for options in a day is nothing so this really gives me no indication of where the set sentiment is today with the hedge funds or very little view of the actual sentiment of hedge funds with amc stock in the day if we do take a look at the at the uh live number of open interest that is held in the call side for this expiration for this friday you're sitting at 74 and a half percent of the total option activity is held in calls 25 0.42% of this open interest is held in puts. So very much skewed to a positive move by the end of the week. That's where option uh, buyers are definitely placed. That's where option sellers are placed as well, betting that the stock will move higher by the end of this week. And like I said in the last video, due to the fact that a lot of the economic data is out the way, a lot of the risks are out the way, we're not yet to earnings or at least big earnings. It gives us a little bit more flexibility on, you know, going up or down, just simply put, with AMC. You guys already know we do have data coming on Friday. Personal income, personal spending, durable goods orders, and the PCE price index from, you know, now until then, you know, we could be in for some decent moves. And if you guys watched the video earlier or if this is your first time to the channel in a while you do have about five times the amount of calls for this friday than you do for puts out of the money put sitting at about thirty six thousand, out of the money call sitting at about a hundred and forty one thousand. whereas in the money calls twenty two thousand in the money puts at about twenty thousand. so <coughs> <coughs> so you're still you know looking super good as far as options are concerned and if you do start to break above key levels one of those being that six dollar level that's where things get a little bit interesting in my personal opinion if we do take a look at this option expiration that uh will be happening this friday at the 550 call you see sixteen thousand for open interest at the six dollar call you see twenty nine thousand for open interest at the uh, at the 650 call you see 26,000 for open interest at the seven dollar call 8,500 750 call 17,000 6,500 at the eight dollar call right and basically the same thing continues but it's a little bit different this week I would say because a lot of the open interest is held relatively speaking pretty close to going into the money <coughs> most of this you know w would would only take a dollar to have all of these 
uh, contracts go into the money. And you're looking at 1.57 million shares that would have to be hedged at the 550 strike. You're looking at 2.91 million shares that would have to be hedged at the $6 strike and 2.63 million shares that would have to be hedged at the 650 strike. And that is only on the call side, let alone the put side. If any of those puts ran out of the money, that would be more uh, shares that would have to be bought by market makers. So I will say there is an incentive here to have the market makers see the stock not go, you know, to 550 or 6 or 650. But, you know, they might not have a choice just from now until Friday with, with the lack of economic data, the, the lack of potentially, hopefully, bad news coming. You might actually, you know, see the stock break above those key levels. That is obviously not my base case scenario, but I think it's something that shouldn't be ignored. And even given... Because today is Wednesday, and a lot can even happen in two days. Let me remind you of this move that we've seen from $5.05, the intraday low on November 9th, to the 50-day moving average, which was two consecutive positive days. This was actually Thursday and Friday, November 10th and no, uh, November 11th. Thursday, obviously the 10th. Friday, obviously the 11th. Take a look at that gainer from the five dollar five cent low and this was the low of 2022 at the time that was a 43 percent gain from the low in two days to get to the 50-day moving average from where we are right now which would be from the low to the 50-day even back here so just repeating the same thing uh, that happened and we'll go from the low down here as well from four dollars 74 cents up to the 50-day moving average would be a gain of about 37 percent but from where we currently are to get to that 50-day moving average it would be around a 23 percent gain so i do think that is a lot more obtainable uh from my perspective here and it looks to be you know, that could be the case, especially if Micron earnings are good and we do get positive, uh, those positive economic data points coming on Friday might be setting up for something nice. The option activity definitely supports it, guys. So that is it for this video. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, source your comments, questions or concerns down below in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.